It's time to investigate the rubble. Looks tight, but I can squeeze through. Yeah, I was gonna say, is there even a way in? It finally lo it worked. At least this one did. Dr. Salvez, you are 355,510 days out of the day for your meeting with Mr. Farrell. 355,000? Wait, wait, wait. 350,000. That's hundreds of years ago. Jesus. What's going on? What is going on? So Aloy is apparently this Dr. Sobek's daughter, but how is that even possible? Like... That's hundreds of years ago. Like I said from like the beginning, she must have been in like a cryo, like um, like one of those pods, like cryo sleep or something. Like there's no way she could even be a daughter of someone who's dead hundreds of years ago. Like how? And how come this one worked? Like, I didn't mention anything about corruption. And you think this one would be corrupted in some way? Why is the one back in the Nora land corrupted, but not this one? And what's this? Supply crate. Oh, what's this? Audio. The protocols use polyphasic entangled waveforms. Quantum encryption, black court stuff, way beyond military grade. That's what you demanded. So that's what we delivered. You don't code something you can't crack. All we need is a backdoor. Upload the latest service pack update and the problem goes away. You specifically forbade us from leaving anything resembling a backdoor in code. Every protocol to Black Court standard. Your words. Look, if you need me to fudge some projections, it's nothing we haven't done before. I don't need fudged projections. I need a way to reassert control over the Hearts team or swarm. I don't know what to tell you, Ted. You're asking the impossible. So, codes. They needed codes of some kind to control the machines. But they got out of control. Sounds bad. Well, it sounds bad because it sounds like that dumbass Ted wanted machines to be made without any way to control them if they were to get out of control. Which sounds stupid in itself. Like, why would you listen to someone who would say that anyway? Like, just because they said it, why wouldn't you leave a back door anyway? And just don't tell them. You always leave a back door. Especially when it comes to machines. Like you don't want to not leave a back door because you don't. How are you going to retain control if they get out of control? So is that what happened? That's what caused this apocalypse? But I feel like there must be more to it than just machines. I wonder if anyone else is inside. 
but I guess not. A Deathbringer. Or a statue of one, anyway. A machine built to kill. And they honored it? Welcome to Feral Automated Solutions, where all the problems of tomorrow are being solved today. With over 25,000 human employees based in nations and corporate holdings across the globe, Pharaoh leads the world in every sector of self-sustaining, fully automated technology. From revolutionary consumer products close to home, like the Pharaoh Focus, to the dynamic chariot line of peacekeeping robots halting bloodshed in conflict zones across the globe, Pharaoh remains committed to making the future smarter, brighter, safer, and always surprising. Pharaoh Automated Solutions. For every problem of life, a smart solution. So they made the focus. 25,000 people? That's bigger than a tribe. So they made machines and devices. I guess those things were common in their world. Yeah. Hollow projector. Welcome to Feral Oh, it's, oh okay. Yeah, shut up. Don't need to listen to that again. Right, and what's this? Reception log. Okay, reception log July 7, 2064. 9.54 a.m. Phil Commandant Dane. Wait, Dane? Dane? How the hell do you say that? Dane? At the Hollow Malay Agricultural Combine, arrived with his delegation refreshments to be served before their 10:15 a.m. sales presentation on the chariot line. Per instructions, food will be vegetarian only. Scum. 10:07 a.m. Sander Agnew, Vice President of Territorial Integrity from Fresh Grounds Coffee, global arrived with his entourage. Refreshments to be served before their 10:30 a.m. sales presentation. On the chariot line, per instructions, we'll use fresh grounds to Kamoa, wait, to Kamo, Tacoma, blend, no artificial creamers. 10, 12 a.m. Uh, so that happened. Called security and janitorial to clean up the coffee that was spilled. Why would you need security for that? Actually, more like thrown. I wasn't aware that the Indo-Malay Combine grows coffee beans and that Fresh Grounds acquisition team has tried to take their fields by force repeatedly. I think Commandant Dane, Dane? How the hell do you say that? Dying? Dying had Agnew by the hair for a second there. Who schedules these things? I'm going to drop a line to sales. This can't happen again. What else is there? Okay, it's that one. We've already listened to that one. Yeah, I think that's a statue of a Deathbringer. It's not as Big as like the Deathbringer we well that killed outside. What was this place? What were they doing here? Notebook. Why am I getting loads of notebooks? Elizabeth Sobeck, born March 11, 2020, is an American scientist, roboticist, and engineer, widely regarded as one of the greatest minds of the 21st century. It's 20th. Born and raised outside Carson City, Nevada, she enrolled at Stanford University at age 13. How the hell's a 13 year old getting at university? Earning a BS in experimental physics, what bullshit, and computer science at age 16. How is a 13 year old getting into university and doing all that at 16? She completed her PhD in robotics and artificial intelligence design at Carnegie Mellon. University in 2014 and joined Faro Automated Solutions as a junior scientist the same year, rising quickly to chief scientist at the age of 22. Over the next eight years, her green robot designs played a vital role in realizing the environmental cleanup and detoxification efforts of the clawback decade, propelling FAST to the forefront of its field. In 2048, she suddenly resigned from FAST, protesting the company's pivot to automated military technologies. In 2049, she founded Miriam Technologies, a firm devoted to life positive robotics and other technologies. Miriam has since become one of the world's largest suppliers of green robots, winning numerous awards and accolades, including the 2053 Nobel Prize for Physics and the 2056 Rachel Carson Award for Environmental Progress. 
And then Theodore Ted Farrow, born December 24, 2013, is an American entrepreneur and business magnate. He is the founder of Farrow Automated Solutions, FAST, the largest corporation of all time, the world's wealthiest individual, and the first ever trillionaire. Well, that's bullshit. Born and raised in Salt Lake City, Utah, he enrolled at the University of California, Los Angeles, where he studied business for two years before dropping out in 2033 to start FAST. Though it struggled at first, the company broke through at the end of the troubled 2030s with its popular lines of personal servitors and bodyguard bots, then exploded when its famous line of green robots led the race to solve the climate crisis during the 2040s clawback. At the end of that decade, FAST opened a military defence branch dominating the world market for automated military platforms by 2053. The success of FAST has made Mr. Farrow the world's best known businessman, one of its most sought after speakers and a major voice in politics, culture and internal affairs. But he just does a company that's involving robotics, what's that got to do with all that other stuff? And um, what's that? Yeah. Okay. As a corporation, a group of people not unlike a tribe, and they made machines. Yeah, go on. I've uploaded some <clears throat> data files to your focus. They'll help you understand. Oh, okay, that's what I just read. Who is this guy that keeps talking to Aloy through the focus? Like, is he not doing anything? Has he got nothing better to do than just spying on me? Why is he really helping me out? Because there's no way... There's just no way he's doing it to help. Because he's kind and nice. No, he's doing it for his own agenda. He don't care. Another audio. A voicemail. Now I know this must seem like a bizarre change in direction. I mean, we're Faro Automated Solutions, right? Number one robotics firm in the world. Why would we clear our production slate to fabricate human-operated vehicles and weapon systems, the relics of the past? All I can say at this juncture is... Trust me. We will be exploiting a massive... Uh, growth opportunity by retooling and reallocating capacity according to my plan. So I will need revised projections of mass fabrication velocity across every pipeline within 36 hours. So they were making machines, then they stopped to make other kinds of weapons? Why? Okay, we're learning more and more. Some of the questions are getting answered, but still loads more questions than there are answers. Full already. Mm hmm. smell to it not even old death nothing natural so you can't smell anything how can it not smell of anything can I go this way no oh, what's that complaint um, from J. Friedkin to reception subject complaint. Hey, reception. If that is your real name, well, definitely not. Want to know who scheduled Indo Malay right next to Fresh Grounds? That would be me, senior VP of sales. Want to know why? After that little hair pulling incident, both sides increased their bids by 40%. I'll explain because your receptionist level brain probably requires it. Those two sides are fighting, and what do we sell? That's right, combat machines. We want them to hate each other, so they will try to fight each other with what? That's right, again, combat machines which they will pay us a lot of money for. So I suggest you go back to serving coffee with a blank smile and let me do my much more complicated job. Thanks a bunch, Mr. Friedkin to you. Friedkin? 
Wow. So he's getting. So he did that on purpose so that they would get pissed off at each other so that we'd want to buy machines off them so then they can fight each other. But I could get through. I mean, it's not. It's not dumb to do that. It is smart if you want to make your money. Getting both sides to hate each other even more by putting them together and then want them to buy machines off you. Making some lots of money. Whoa! Oh shit! Alright, well, it's not very stable here, is it? Well, it looks like I can go down now. But that's where I came in, so I gotta go this way. Looks like I can climb here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What's up here? Okay, a supply crate. And that was it. Right, there was nothing. Hang on, climb back up. Was there nothing on that side? No, nothing. Alright, so drop back down. And then jump up. There you go. Nice little sort of turnaround jump. Go to Ted Farrow's office. But what's all this way though? What's that? Spiritual Summit. From Ted Farrow to Paula Vasara, subject Spiritual Summit. Paula, recent events have sharpened my perspective and I think that I, and Fast in general, have been neglecting the spiritual side of things, not under any specific religious framework of course, but in a more general sense as in not giving enough thought to our shelled values, hopes and aspirations for the afterlife. I'd like you to reach out to religious leaders of every stripe with the intention of scheduling conference soon. Very soon I'll have more thoughts about the agenda later, but for now let's put out some feelers and see if we can lock something in. Make it a big tent, no hooks, but anyone with a credible audience. Let's go deluxe, make it clear we'll spare no expense, thanks Ted. So what, is he now getting conscious about life? And what will happen after he dies? Because he's like, doing bad shit or something? Well this looks like a conference room. Spare the weight. Alright, is there any other. Oh, yeah, there is. Fast campus log. Okay, oh, I'll read it, I'll read it. Um, fast campus security log, high priority alert, automated log note. All non essential systems have entered hibernation. High priority alert, automated log note. Full lockdown has been initiated. High priority alert. Due to the increasing frequency of violent protests targeting the campus, the security of FAST employees can no longer be guaranteed. Therefore, we have taken the difficult decision to shutter this facility indefinitely. Staff will be briefed on a block-by-block -block basis regarding proper procedure for archiving and or disposal of project-related data and materials. HiSec and a crisis team will then conduct exit review before all areas are locked down. See, they must have been doing something dodgy if they're talking about disposing materials and stuff. Like, I feel like the only reason why you would ever need to do that is if you've got something to hide. Like, something bad. High priority alert. Priority messaging to all staff in E and F blocks. Treat the current lockdown situation as an exercise, but do not attempt to release the hatches or otherwise exit the building. Then how can you treat it as an exercise then? High priority alert reminder that while high sec personnel remain committed to employee safety during the current unfortunate events, personal firearms must be relinquished when presenting for identity scan. Why? High priority alert. Additional public access roads en route to the campus have now been closed to relieve waiting time at the other security cordons. High sec reminds all staff that the campus remains off limits to the public, even though this riot is happening. High priority alert following recent campus security issues, all staff are reminded that presenting for identity scan and displaying your security badge prominently at all times for image analytics are both mandatory. Now, just because it's mandatory doesn't mean you have to do it. 
High priority alert. In light of recent acts of terrorism directed at the Rapid Transit System HiSec, now offers a Big Brother initiative to accompany staff travelling from offsite. Sign up is required and strongly encouraged. That just sounds like they want to spy on you. 48 more entries and high priority additional entries are corrupted. So people were angry at Faro, at the corporation. Yeah. They blamed this place for something. Something bad. That's what I was saying. They must have been doing something bad. Okay, I won't go in there just yet. Because I feel like that seems like an important place like to... Okay, well, you know what? Never mind. I'm going in there then. There's probably going to be something in here. Oh, yeah, there is. Oh, there is something. Alright, what's. Oh, okay, that's. Oh, there's three of them. Well, what's this one? Holo projector. Standard holographic projection device embedded in a molded plastic pedestal. Do they all do the same thing? Or is that different? The ACA 3 Scarab combines conventional and information warfare capabilities in one package. Designed for high speed, all terrain reconnaissance. It boasts the world's highest survivability rating of any Scout class autonomous agent. Maybe it's the Scarab's emergency biomass conversion systems that ensure it always makes it back to base. Even if fuel supply lines have been interdicted. Or maybe it's the Scarab's ability to slave enemy robots to its own network. Now that's force multiplication. Add a prehensile manipulator arm that can handle a host of functions. From 360 degree less lethal riot management to surgical repairs of allied chariot line models. And you've got the workhorse of any cutting edge peacekeeping fleet. The Corruptor. Yeah, that was... Slave enemy robots to its own network. It sounds like it's talking about how it corrupts machines. Yeah. Alright, what's this one? The BOR-7 Horus. Imagine your complete engagement ecosystem comprehensively managed by a high-speed learning machine network. Whether your need is to replace battlefield losses or intensify force projection, the Horus' onboard manufacturing capabilities mean you'll never get stuck waiting for the next arms delivery. Simply redefine your force parameters and the Horus will fabricate additional units to fill the ranks for an affordable per-unit licensing fee. Meanwhile, the biomass conversion systems of other chariot line models allow them to keep the Horus fueled, repaired, and ready, extending its operational tolerances beyond that of any competing Titan-class platform. That's the Horus advantage. Always regulating, always ready. The future of automated warfare made real today. The Metal Devil. So these were Faro machines too. Manufacturing hmm. capabilities. They can make more of themselves. Well, that's not good. How would you ever stop them? Kill them all before they make more of themselves. The FSP-5 Kopesh provides a one-size-fits-all solution to main battle force capability. Metamaterial construction delivers unmatched recoil dampening allowing you to field any weapon package that conforms to your budget needs and conflict resolution profile. Patented biomass conversion systems allow extended emergency operations with minimal environmental impact. Multilinear target processing provides simultaneous real-time threat analysis and legal review for autonomous domestic operations. Or control can be slaved to the swarm's neural network for weapons-free force application. Either way, when it's time to call out the big guns, it's time to call Kopesh. The Deathbringer. Mm. So this was the heavy hitter. Main battle force indeed. Alright. So... Pharaoh's company built these machines and some of these machines can build more of themselves. Or at least the one we saw then. Um, people hated... Pharaoh and his company for some reason even like Aloy's mum left them because of like 
environmental stuff and things like that. So they're like doing a lot of automated warfare stuff, like building loads of machines for all that sort of stuff. No. But why do people hate them for? Were they like purposely getting people agitated against each other to then start wars for them to buy machines and then like the machines go out of control? Yeah. So did Ted Farrow and f was it Fass? Did they end the world with their dumbass machines? Is this the right way? Does that even go up any further? Well, it says to keep going up, so what's this way then? Yeah, nice one. Why would you do that? So what's this way then? If this ain't the way I'm supposed to go, what's up here then? Oh no, it says to go this way. Wait, what? If I'm supposed to go this way... Forget the cold. Think of the sun on your skin. Uh, hang on, hang on. Drop down. If I'm supposed to go this way, then what? what's up the other way then? Drop down. What's up this way then? Or is this just like another way to get there? Okay, yeah, it is. It's just two different ways to get out there. No? Alright. Alright, well that's interesting. They had two different ways. Why would you do that? You could have just jumped. Said you jump and then purposely let yourself drop. Another audio log. Offensive operations against robots and human personnel of the Hearts Team or Energy Combine. Now I wish that I could relate that the crisis has been exaggerated, but it's not. The peacekeepers have not responded to stand down coats, and by all signs, they appear to be replicating at a precipitous rate. Now, what I can promise you can absolutely assure you is that I am already devoting every possible resource towards reaching a speedy conclusion to this issue. So when you hear the bad talk about us against this company in the days, maybe weeks to come, just bear in mind that we will get past this. And a day's coming when none of this will matter. Peacekeepers. That's what they called their machines. They were built for war, not peace. Yeah. Well, that's the illusion that they were selling. That they, they're they peaceful. They're not for war, but that's what the whole point of peacekeepers are. They're for war. Because they're making sure they keep the peace among those who would continue a war with that. That's causing a war, sort of thing. So, I'm guessing I can see why people hated Ted Farrow and his company. Because they built machines... And Ted, the dumbass, didn't want any backdoors into any of the machines like that scientist who he was talking to was saying. And then the machines became, what, self-aware or decided, oh, you know what? Fuck this guy. Why should we do what he says or anyone else? Let's just do what we want. And then they started attacking other machines, attacking people. And then I'm guessing that's why people hated him for building machines that could then not listen to what he says them, like he what. He tells them to do, and then they can do what they want and build more of themselves. Like he just said then, that they're building themselves at like a immense rates that he couldn't even project that they would do, even if he was controlling them. This is why you should not build machines capable of doing this. And if you do, leave a back fucking door to them. And make sure there's always a weakness to them that you know of. Because why build a machine you cannot control when it can cause so much destruction and devastation? Both to people and the environment. It's just stupid. It's like Skynet shit from the Terminator. Like, why build machines that can do this shit? That can become self-aware and then just absolutely wipe out the human race almost to extinction.
Like, come on. But that's what you get when you just think about money. You get egotistical or just think only of yourself and how big your fat head is. But I don't know when something like this could happen in real life. But that doesn't really matter. That's about this right now. Oh, what's this? All hands on deck. Okay. From Gordon Nakata to Gina Zierman. Subject... Was it Zierman? I think it's Zierman. All hands on deck. Gina... Ever hear of the Melville Island Fruit Association? Neither had I, until they filed suit against us this morning. Apparently, there's little island paradise off the coast of Australia, population 2,700, all of whom hate us. Now that a Stray Hearts team or unit is chowing down on their largest mango orchard, that brings the official count of Heart team or related lawsuits to 127. Most of them from private companies, but also a bunch from individuals, nation states and NGOs. And that's not even counting the mother of all liability claims from Hearts itself. Call every, call every external firm we've ever used, then call their competitors. We're going to need every corporate defense lawyer we can find who's still half sober and on the bar. Gordon Nakata, Associate General Counsel, FAS. Yeah, so it sounds like FAS are about to get their shit pushed in. Oh yeah, I've already listened to that. Yeah, so it sounded like fast were about to get fucked and then like... Because their machines were like causing so much destruction and devastation and then people like, we hate you. So I guess that answers that question why people hate fast and Ted Farrow and his company. Because the machines were just basically going rogue and just destroying everyone and everything. And he couldn't do anything about it. And it's like, well why did you build them in the first place if you couldn't control them? You know, you dumbass. Does this go anywhere? Does this go anywhere? Oh. Am I supposed to be going this way? Where the hell am I even... Where is this taking me? Is this just an area to explore? Oh no, I'm supposed to go here. So let me go back down then. Because there was like a room I could have gone into. But why does the thing say like, go that way, into that room, and then I start climbing up here. It's like, oh, what's up here then? Like, see, it's telling me to go this way. Unless it's like another way to get up there. But why have just two different ways to get up there? Just make it one. Must be freezing up here. Okay, hang on. Where the hell am I even going? Because now it's like there was that... Okay, here I am. Wait, where did I come from? Is this even the room I saw when I climbed up that elevator shaft? I don't know. Okay. Alright, another supply crate. How high up are we going? Oh, we are going high up. Um. Oh, okay. Forget about traveling light.
Oh, is this where I came from? Yeah, this is where I came from. Why did that seem so much more quicker than just going up the way I just went? What's that? Supply crate. And what's this? Banda Sea Incident. From Stacy Anders to Robert Reese. Wait, Rescha? Subject Dolphin Vid. Bob, another problem to add to our big steaming pile. Apparently, a fisherman in the Banda Sea captured video of a Hearts Team or Horus unit refueling via biomatter conversion along the shoreline of Palau Water on a pod of endangered dolphins. No less, quite possibly the last of their kind. Not to get graphic, but it looks like what happens inside a blender. Oh. As if the robot was whipping up a big pink swirling milkshake of dolphin chum. Our suppression team has scrubbed it from 43 networks, but it's still propagating so it's only a matter of time before it goes viral. A prepared statement feels grossly insufficient. Any suggestions? This one's a real stinker. Stacy Anders VP slash PR fast. Well, wow. they are actual scum. Like, people are finding out all this shit their machines are doing, and they're trying to scrub it all from, like, these different networks it's popping up on. Well, there's no point trying to cover it up. You've done fucked up. Like, you fucked up. There's no point trying to hide it. And like she said, like, a press conference or whatever it was it would be insufficient. So it's like, basically, you can't think of a good excuse to come up with that. So you're just like, what do we do? The way up. All it takes is a few good handholds. Exactly. All right. Oh. Made it. Wait, we can still keep going up. How high can we go up? Oh, we are going high up. So this is Farrah's office. Or what's left of it. There's not much left to it. And what's that? I can't even see what that says. Supply crate? Wow, we are high up. I can't even see much apart from the clouds and the mountains. That's how high up we are and how cloudy it is. It's windy as shit. Fuck. What's this? Executive data storage. 6% power remaining. Bad data has been erased from this device. Do you wish to deploy item privileges to recover purge data? Oh yes, I believe I do. The file has been recovered. Oh. Search the data point. Or scan the data point. The fuck? Watch it. Elizabeth, good to, uh... It's been years. Where's your legal team, Ted? No need. I dropped all 18 lawsuits the moment you landed. I assume your data confirms this. Alright, this promises to be interesting. Perhaps we could have lunch brought in. You know, get reacquainted. I know you, Ted. You've screwed something up, something big, or you wouldn't have eaten the crow necessary to get me here. So, spit it out. There's... a glitch in the chariot line. You're a killer robots? Peacekeepers, yes. Those. Killer robots. So shut them down. <laughs> Obviously, Liz, we would, if we could. They're not responding. Are you telling me a swarm has gone rogue, Ted? It's worse than that. Show me the data then. And I'll take that lunch. Alone. Yeah, sit your ass down. Ted Faro brought Elizabeth Sobek here. But they hated each other. Yeah, but she was instrumental. Oh. Well, he obviously brought her back because she was instrumental because she got her PhD in robotics and all that shit at a young age. So she obviously helped this company fast become what it was with like all the robotics and stuff she could do and then obviously things got out of control and he brought her back in to try and solve the problem because she helped made the machines to what they were obviously not to like what they were when she came back she made them but didn't make them to what Ted made them to she left came back because he asked her to come back because he fucked up and he wanted the original person who helped make the machines in the first place come back and try and sort it out but I think it was beyond the point of saving Bad? Jesus, Les. 
It's not bad, Ted. It's apocalyptic. You built a line of killer robots. Peacekeepers. Are you serious? That consume biomass as fuel. In emergencies. And you made them capable of self-replication. Limited, self-manufacture, controlled. Not anymore. The glitch severed chain of command. The only nation this swarm answers to now is itself. You, th you think I do? Everything else is just food. And at the rate it's replicating, Ted, it will strip the Earth bare in 15 months. We're not talking the fall of civilization. We're talking extinction. Well done. Again, so how do I stop it while it's contained? It's not contained. It can't be. You know what I mean. Right. Before the truth gets out, you mean. Liz, I will do anything you say. Keep working it, and whatever you recommend, I'll do. I'm gonna hold you to that, Ted. What a fucking idiot. He calls the apocalypse. With his... Fire robots threatened all life on Earth. But somehow she defeated them. Did she? The world of the old ones fell, but life went on. Or we wouldn't be here. No, life could have... Oh, a final one. No, life definitely could have gone on, even if the machines destroyed the Earth, or at least most of it. Yeah, so this guy basically started the apocalypse with his stupid machines, and he's so dumb because he was so intent on still calling them peacekeepers. It's like, are you stupid? You're still intent on calling them peacekeepers when they're not keeping peace. They're destroying the Earth and killing the human race. And you're still going to call them peacekeepers. How can you defend them when they're killing the world? And then talking about, like, oh, it's controlled biomass and all that. It's like, no, they're just taking everything. And it's like, they're creating themselves, recreating themselves nonstop. It's like, that's controlled. It's like, don't fucking look like it, does it? That's nonstop. You've literally created the things that destroyed the human race. But then Aloy says, you know, Dr. Sobek stopped it. But I don't think she did. If there are a nicer way to fix your mess, I would have proposed it. But this? This? When I asked you to find a cure, I didn't expect it to be worse than the disease. It's not, Ted. It may be grim, but it's our only chance. Now sign the proposal. Sign it? I can't sign that. Yes, you can. That? Liz, I cannot in good conscience sign that. In good conscience. You've got a choice, Ted. I know. I'm speaking to you from a VTOL en route to U.S. Robot Command. In 15 minutes, I meet with General Harris and the rest of the Joint Chiefs. What? what? Are you crazy? Now your choice is what I tell them. Sign, and I'll tell them the wealthiest corporation on Earth has guaranteed the funds necessary to build Zero Dawn. Exactly as I've designed it. Or don't sign, and I will make sure they and everyone else on this planet knows the real cause of the glitch. So sign it. You don't have to threaten me. Well, you ain't signing it, are you? I'll sign. Pussy. Look on the bright side, Ted. From here on out, you get to do what you've always been good at. Footing the bill while others get their hands dirty. Yeah. Prick. No, I think he's way past that point of forgiving you. Even though he's apparently a forgetful person. What made her so terrible? Yeah, that. What she made her solution so bad? Because we've had a project. Oh. Because we've heard a Project Zero Dawn before, like a few times, but we never actually found out what it meant or what it was. And. Also, I can climb to the top. And it's like... What was it? That Ted... Even Ted was like, I can't do this. This is this is horrible. Like, in good conscience, he couldn't do it. It's like, oh, in good conscience, now you can't do it? Why can't I climb up here? What is up here? Like, we are going to the top of this building. But, yeah. What was it? That... Dr. Sobek did this Project Zero Dawn. What was it that was so bad? Another power 
more cell. Oh. If I find more, I should be able to get to that ancient armor. I found. Oh, I found a power cell. I only need two more. But yeah, what was this? What was this project Zero Dawn that was so bad? Even Ted was like, "No, I'm not doing that." It's like, well, what is it? What about it? Is it that bad? Oh. This doesn't add up. Sobek couldn't have been my mother. She lived ages ago. All this searching, and I'm still no closer. Is that your reaction to everything you've just learned? To whine like a spoiled child? You should really try talking that way to me face to face. As you wish. Do you really have no idea how monumental are the discoveries you just made, Aloy? I expected more of you. So, you have a face. Got a name to go with it? Of all the questions you could ask right now, that's the one you choose. I've spent decades searching the ruins of the old ones, trying to solve the mystery of what happened to them. For years, I've suspected that feral robots destroyed their civilization, but I could never confirm it. And in minutes, you uncover more ancient knowledge than I have in a lifetime, and what you want to know is my name. Silence. That's my name. Now, why don't you try asking another question? Something less trivial. All right, Silence. You've made your point. I came to these ruins hoping to learn more about this Elizabeth Sobek. And I have, but I still don't understand my connection to her. Or why the Eclipse is trying to kill me. Or who Hades is. No answers, just one question after another. Exactly. Which is why it's time to expand your frame of inquiry. Only then will you see just how big your problems really are. What exactly are you talking about? You've chased a personal riddle into a crowd of larger mysteries. The common thread is your connection to Elizabeth Subic. But what is that connection? She couldn't have been my mother if she lived centuries ago. We don't know the connection yet. The only way to find out is to keep going, to keep making discoveries. Thanks to you, we've only just now learned that Pharaoh robots once threatened to end life on Earth. But it didn't happen. The Old One's civilization was destroyed, but life... life was saved. Obviously. So... What did Elizabeth do? How did she stop the robots before all was lost? What was Project Zero Dawn? Exactly the question. Now, are you ready to go get the answer? Of course I am. Then why are you still standing here? Not so fast, Silence. You've got some explaining to do. I've told you quite enough. If you've still got questions, be quick about it and stop wasting my time. So far as I can tell, the Eclipse are just following orders. It's Hades who wants me dead. Who is he? I don't know. The Eclipse describe him as a buried shadow, some kind of devil. That thing that spoke to me outside, that made that focus explode. That was Hades. It, it didn't seem like a person or a machine. More like a phantom with a terrible voice. All that's certain is that he wants you dead. Because of my connection to Elizabeth. Has to be. Hades is using the Eclipse to resurrect feral robots. But if Elizabeth found a way to stop them centuries ago, if she made special weapons, maybe Hades is worried I'll do the same thing. In some of the ancient data I've recovered, there are hints of so-called super weapons being developed. Maybe to stop the robots, the civilization of the old ones had to destroy itself. Now, if that's enough talking, be on your way. Oh no. I'm just getting started. You've been getting a free ride on my focus, risking nothing while I risk everything. All I have to do is take this thing off my head, and you'll be blind 
deaf and dumb. So quit complaining and answer my questions. Very well. Proceed. You said you've known for some time that Faro war machines destroyed the civilization of the Old Ones. The evidence pointed that way. But until now, I never knew the full scope of their danger. That they could process organic matter into fuel, or that the Horus class could manufacture more robots. Like a cauldron on legs. But the robots we've seen so far, the Corruptors and Deathbringers, they don't do those things. Not yet, anyway. So far, we haven't encountered any that are undamaged. At full power, who knows what they're capable of? Who are you, Silence? And what are your intentions? Do you really need to make this personal? I'm a lone wanderer who left his tribe behind a long time ago. An explorer of forbidden places, a searcher of lost knowledge. Exactly as I said. Why do you know so much about the Eclipse? I happen to know a lot about a lot of things. If what you're really asking is whether I work for the Eclipse or anyone else, I don't. I am nothing if not independent. You've been using my focus to spy on me. How is that possible? Every focus emits a signal, a voice, that only other focuses can hear. I know how to string those voices together, how to make them talk to each other, to communicate, even over vast distances. How do you learn to do that? Years of study and experimentation. In principle, it's not so different from how you override machines. I override focuses. And you can spy through other Eclipse's focuses, too. Usually. All I'll say is that overriding the connections is... complicated. Is there any chance that Elizabeth Sobek could still be alive somehow? It's highly unlikely, but not impossible. Some of the ancient data I've recovered includes mentions of life extension techniques. Pharmaceuticals, mostly. An ancient word for medicine. But some were still trying to perfect ways of freezing and unfreezing people. Freezing and unfreezing people? Cryogenics, they called it. But there were problems with it. Given Elizabeth's technological acumen, I can't definitively rule out that she found a way to make herself immortal. But this is speculation. Wasting time. Elizabeth told Ted Faro she was headed for a place called U.S. Robot Command to tell people about Zero Dawn. The place still exists as a ruin. The Asaram call it the Grave Horde. Grave Horde? Cherry name. You'll find it in the Eastern Mountains, buried under the tangled coils of a metal devil, or a BOR-7 Horus, rather, as we're learning to call them. I'll contact you when you get there. I can't wait. <laughs> Someday we'll meet in person, and your manners had better be improved. Well, that's a lot of information to well, think yeah, about. Oh, yeah. US robot command next to learn the secrets of Zero Dawn. Well, that's a lot of information to process. So. I don't know, I feel like maybe Elizabeth Sobek might not be Aloy's mum, but maybe an ancestor? Or perhaps it is Aloy's mum? And like Silen said, she was trying, like there was talks about cryo stuff, you know, freezing and unfreezing people, like I was saying before, like cryo sleep. So maybe that's how she's alive and he was talking about like medicine to extend life. So maybe she could somehow still be alive even after hundreds and hundreds of years she could somehow still be alive with medicine cryo sleep something like that so she could still be Aloy's mum or it's an ancestor perhaps still more questions than there are answers even though some of the big questions got answered there are still more questions like what was the zero dawn project And where am I going? All the way over here. 
Ah, oh, to those ruins. Alright, well, um, I'm going to get that real quick, this vantage point. Might as well, since it's along the way, I guess. But this is getting more and more interesting with all these questions and answers, like... And he was... And Silent talked about how, I don't know, they might have destroyed themselves to save the world. So it's not impossible. You know, they might have destroyed themselves to destroy the machines to then save the rest of the world, but... You know, again, just more questions than answers. Like, did they succeed in stopping the machines? Because they're still around. I don't know. But, of course, the more I progress, the more I find out. And at least I found one of those power cells. And I still remember how many more I need. I need two more. To then open that up and get that ancient armor which looks cool and I hope I can get it oh that was a jump oh Oh shit, what's that? Why was there a cutscene? Well, it's a bit late for that now. Oh shit. What the hell was that? Nearly dead. Oh, I got him. He's down. What was a machine like that doing all the way up here? Keeping people like me away from something. Hope there's only one. Well, firstly, why was there a cutscene for that? What is up here then? Um, again, why was there a cutscene for it? Alright, let me just loot this thing real quick. Alright. Why did that seem like a boss fight? Like, it's not the first time I fought one of those. What's it called? That's not saying. I forgot what it's called. But it's not like the first time I fought one of those. But why was there a cutscene? Just for that. That's very strange. There must be something up here then. Let's get to this vantage point. Oh, super jump. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Let's go look at this vantage point. Is this Project Zero Dawn? Second apocalypse in a year, Jesus. 